Hello everyone, I am myself Dr. Sakshi. So on this World Down Syndrome Day, I am starting this YouTube channel as suggested by my fellow colleagues, obstetricians throughout the country who have limited access to genetics and fetal medicine. So this platform will be highly dedicated to clinicians, mostly obstetricians, where we will clarify the concepts in, basic, um, in genetics and fetal medicines in very a uh, basic language. So uh, my approach will be to discuss case-based scenarios where we sometimes get stuck and we want someone to uh, resolve these questions. So you can put any questions, any doubts you have on this platform and I'll be there to help you, to guide you and give my inputs. So let me give you a brief introduction about myself. I have done my graduation and post-graduation in obstetrics and gynecology from PGIMS Rohtak. And after completing my post-graduation, I decided to pursue uh, super specialization or DM in a rare branch, which is medical genetics from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. So uh, many people ask me, Sakshi, why did you leave OBS and Gaini? So I didn't leave OBS and Gaini, but I'm taking care of that rare part which we generally used to leave during our post-graduation days. Because uh, when we are doing our MS, our main focus is on the most common disorders. And if you speak the rare disorder first, you will be blasted like everything. But with the advancement in the technology and the Indian population, the rare disorders are not that rare and there has to be someone to take care of those rare causes. If I talk about the rare disorders, uh, considering the huge population burden in India, these rare disorders are not that rare. So if I talk about common disorders like Down syndrome, around 30 to 35,000 Down syndrome babies are born every year. In case of thalassemia in North India, the carrier frequency is quite high, it reaches up to 35%. Even in SMA, you will be surprised to know a recent study quoted that 1 out of 30 individuals are carrier for an SMA. SMA is spinal muscle atrophy, which is a leading cause of infant mortality. The only thing is there is a lack of suspicion when to suspect a genetic disorder. This is a biggest question or challenge to most of the clinicians. And even in obstetric practice, I would suggest once you rule out all the common obstetrical causes, for example, in FGR, recurrent pregnancy loss, infertility, do think about genetic disorders. So the, the percentage which we used to uh, study that sometimes cause is not identified, we label it as idiopathic. So that idiopathic thing, that idiopathic percentage is nowadays decreasing because we are able to find the genetic causes for most of the disorders. Even in case of gynecological cancers, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, cancer endometrium, and in any family history of cancers, always try to rule out the germline hereditary cancers. So why it is important for the obstetricians to have a basic idea about genetics and fetal medicine? Because we are the first clinicians to be contacted by the family and they trust us. The other important thing is that you should always keep yourself updated with the recent guidelines, all the recent advances and the tests for the better management of the patient and their care. So I'm going to briefly share with you five common fundas which you should always keep in mind so that you don't miss on any genetic key. Number one, during history taking. So whenever you come in contact with your family, with a patient, just ask one line. Is everyone okay in your family or any issues with any family member? If they give you a certain hit, just go in deep into this and redirect the family accordingly. Second, if previous baby has any issues like intellectual disability, thalassemia, autism, uh, any sudden neonatal death, sudden IUD, do not refrain yourself from taking any specialist pediatrician or geneticist opinion to rule out any genetic involvement in such cases. So these cases are to be referred as early as possible because the evaluation, genetic tests, they require a lot of time, a lot of patience, interpretation, everything. Number three, if during pregnancy, any congenital malformation is detected in the fetus or if there is certain IUD, always convince the family to undergo a thorough investigation, including the genetic tests, to know the etiology and to predict the risk of recurrence in next pregnancy. Fourth, always offer uh, antenatal screening 
and carrier screening to all your patients. Detail I'll be discussing in next videos. So the fifth, if you have a patient with any gynecological cancers and any of these features, do rule out hereditary cancer syndromes. So uh, thank you everyone for your patient hearing and you can post your uh, questions, doubts and any topic which you want to be get discussed. I'll make a video in the next session and uh, hoping for a strong relation between you and me. Thank you. Namaste.